we're not trying to train our AI by having it listen to music to try to copy that music. We think the best you're going to do is create just a cheaper version of that music and the world has enough cheap music. So we don't need more cheap music out there. Generative AI is nothing new. In fact, according to an Intel exec I was speaking with about a week ago, it's been around since the 1970s, believe it or not. But obviously, it's kind of having a moment right now. OpenAI, ChatGPT, all of that stuff, and so many competitors joining in, Google, other things going on. Today, we're chatting with kind of an OG of generative AI, maybe not quite that OG. His name is Edward Belisanian. He's the founder and CEO of Amy.ai, and they have a very cool AI music application that we're going to hear a little bit more about, and they're launching formally now as South by Southwest. Welcome, Edward. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, super pumped to have you. For those who aren't familiar, we chatted, it's got to be half a year ago, maybe a year ago about Amy. For those who aren't familiar, what is Amy? Amy is a generative music platform and our focus is on enabling creators to leverage the technology that we've built to accelerate their ability to create music. And uh, the app that we'll show you today is, is part of that platform, more focused on enthusiasts who want to interact with music, kind of a light version of creating, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's quite interesting to me and I've used it uh, on and off for since we've chatted actually. And I, what I've used it for, what's been really helpful for me is just focus music. Like I'm working, I, I need something going on, but I don't want something that's too intrusive into my environment. And it just generates, auto generates, uh, generates with help. We'll get into that. Um, some cool music that works, but you've got various different genres and you've got artists involved in the process. Talk about that. Uh, one of the challenges, I'll give some context first. One of the challenges with generative AI is lawsuits, <laughs> artists, creators mm -hmm. feeling like, hey, uh, that's mine. You used my material to train your system so that you can give away something for free that I would have been able to provide. Talk about that and how it works, uh, how you're working with creators and Amy. Well, you bring up a really good point. And I, I think the thing to emphasize there is that we're not trying to train our AI by having it listen to music to try to copy that music. We think the best you're going to do is create just a cheaper version of that music. I and mean, the world has enough cheap music, so we don't need more cheap music out there. Uh, the difference between that kind of training and what we're doing is we're training Amy to produce music the way a producer does. So we kind of bypass the whole problem of copyright because we're not teaching Amy based on it listening to copyrighted material. Instead, we're teaching Amy to make music the way a producer does. And the other benefit of that is that we can expose levers to the way that AI is making the music that mirrors the way a producer makes music. So the control that they get maps to the way that they think about creating music as well. Uh, you know, a good analogy for that is if you think about ChatGPT, for example, if you type in a bunch of prompts and you get a three-page response back, you can't really change that second paragraph to your liking the way you want, or maybe the third sentence in the fourth paragraph. It's kind of opaque when you think about these large monolithic neural networks. I mean, that doesn't really work when you're talking about enabling creators in the music space. So those are kind of the key differences that enable us to avoid the copyright issue, but also really speak to creators in the way that they make music. Super interesting. Maybe go a little more in depth. How did you train Amy to generate music? How did you teach it what music is and how music works and what people want to hear when they hear different types of music? Well, uh, when we first spoke about a year ago, we were very early in the process and we had essentially a model that could pick loops and combine them at runtime and make music. Now, the, the issue with that is any, any kind of model typically is going to have this sort of inertia problem where you need feedback to train the model, but the feedback is difficult to get because people aren't readily going to just sit around and listen to bad music and give you feedback. So you kind of have this bar that you have to get over where the music has to get good enough that people will listen to it for pleasure and in the course of doing so provide you feedback. So we've essentially combined expert systems with machine learning. And what the expert systems do is make music similar to the way a producer would, 
but they're constantly training our machine learning models to replicate what they're doing, but with the twist of the user's preferences or the artist's preferences included. So the expert system is good at making music. It's just not nuanced towards your tastes or a genre or an artist's tastes. And that's where the machine learning comes in and adds that sort of twist that makes it more personalized, more genre specific, or more artist specific. Interesting. Are you using expert system the way some people use the term deep learning? So it's kind of like guided uh, machine learning in a sense? Well, AI is kind of a broad umbrella. And underneath AI, you've got machine learning, you've got deep learning, you've got expert systems. So expert systems typically are, um, they, they can be algorithmic and we do use a lot of algorithms. We have in fact invented a programming language called Amy Script. Uh, we didn't have this when we spoke to you before. Amy Script is a full featured generative music programming language. It's a TypeScript based language. So you as an artist can sit down and write a very elaborate program using Amy Script and make music using that. And uh, artists love writing areas. code. I mean, we know this, it's a, it's a known fact. <laughs> well, we've made it really easy. So it's basically drag and drop. You know, you can essentially, we've sat down with close to 200 artists and distilled their expert techniques into algorithms. And Amazing. as a new artist on the platform, you can just grab the algorithms that you want, put them together, shape this multidimensional musical space. And then Amy takes you on a journey by picking the different algorithms and picking the different loops that combine with those algorithms at runtime. Huh. Wow. So I know from the beginning, you had the idea of working with creators, working with artists, you've added artists, you've mentioned it's now about 200. What can I expect when I hear something from an artist and from Amy? What's the interplay there? How do they engage? How much of a composition is from an artist? How much is from Amy? Yeah, one thing that we learned in the past year of working with a lot of artists is that there's no one answer to that question. In fact, some artists that we met with are thrilled to jump in to the code and write Amy's script and be fully prescriptive about the music that's coming out of the system. And other artists are really keen to just let the system do its thing. And one of the key elements that we've added into our platform is the ability for the artist to really steer that. They're in charge of how much control they have or how much control the AI has. And uh, we found that that interplay by giving the artist that kind of control is just one more way to empower them to really be expressive, uh, whether it is expressive by feeding something that kind of they let go or being expressive by being very prescriptive about what they want to hear. Can anyone come on board and be an artist and use Amy and get access to the programming language? Is it invite only? How's it work? So we have a product called Amy Studio that's being released in a couple months. And Amy Studio is the creator platform. The app that we've just released today is more of a consumer platform or consumer app, I should say. Uh, but we're using it to really make it clear that music doesn't have to be so intimidating. It's, it should be more accessible and inclusive. In fact, part of the reason we don't use the word artist as much is we want to unleash the inner artist in everybody. We want everyone to feel like that. We don't want it to be uniquely for people who are quote unquote artists. Um, mm -hmm. And our interactive music player basically teaches you about how music is made and gives you the ability to take ownership of your music experience. And we find that's empowering, especially for people who aren't trained musicians, who don't know music theory or music composition or the nuances of a genre that they want to mix for. And all of that is a very steep learning curve. And if you add on to that tools that you have to use for production, it's a significant investment before you can even make a sound, it's the, let alone mm -hmm. something worth listening to. Mm -hmm. So the... The app gives you the ability to interact with the existing experiences that have been created. And then Amy Studio lets you create new experiences. But again, you can let the AI guide you in that, or you can take full control over it. So you can be a novice or an expert and still benefit from Amy Studio. So many questions here. Uh, when, when an artist releases a composition, is it a discrete, unchanging thing? In the, like we have in the old world of music, there's a track, I play it, it's from an album, and I can't in, engage with it, I can't change it, I can't modify it? Or is it something that I, as a listener, can engage with and change and, and evolve a little bit? The, the latter. So we call them experiences for that reason. 
And one of the really important elements of an experience is that it's a dynamic thing. So you're con as an artist, you are constantly getting feedback about how people are engaging with your music. You know, whether they gave a thumbs up on your beats, thumbs down on your harmony, you can swap out the harmony, pop in a new melody. You can constantly change and evolve the music that's being expressed. But more importantly, just like we give the artist these levers to control the AI, we've exposed these same levers to the listener. Simpler ones, but it, this is what allows the listener to kind of take the steering wheel with Amy when it goes on this journey to this multidimensional space that the artist created, which we call an experience. It's fascinating. Um, if you think about it, music has always been an engagement and interaction between somebody who's creating and somebody who's listening. And you have, hear live recordings and the audience becomes part of what is actually the recorded thing there. This is the next level on that. I'm trying to position Amy in my brain somewhere. I like to put things in slots occasionally. Some, you know, maybe that's just me. Maybe it's human. I don't know. I'm thinking like there's garage band and I've used garage band. Don't consider myself a musician. Couldn't, can't play a piano or a guitar or, or, or a flute or something like that. But I've used garage band to create some stuff, some for my podcast, other things that I've, you know, that I think, Hey, that's kind of cool. That's kind of nice. This is different. How do you characterize its differences? Well, the number one thing is that we've, we've built the whole ecosystem and we had to, because if you're an artist and you're going to use Amy studio to make generative music, we need to show you that there's an audience that people will actually mm -hmm. listen to this, consume it. That's one of the reasons we built this app. When we had first talked to you, the app was very early and we had built it primarily for artists to be able to listen to the music that they were making on the platform. The crazy thing is we had close to 100,000 downloads and a 4.8 rating in the app store with that. So it kind of showed us that people want music to fill time and space. And that's something that we do at work. It's something that we do when we're driving. It's something we do when we have a dinner party. Generative music is great for that. So part of our goal is to show that there's an audience for this music and then encourage more creators to come on the platform to create music for these, for this audience. But at the same time, we're engaging that audience and showing them that music is not inaccessible. It doesn't need to be intimidating. And we want them to go and download Amy Studio and become creators as well. Amazing. Amazing. What's the monetization here? Uh, Amy itself, I believe, has had a subscription model. What about Amy Studio? How, how do you make money and how do artists who create music with Amy make money? Yeah, so this has been another evolution in our thinking. So very early on, we thought about making a premium version of the app and we tinkered around with that. And we realized very quickly that we don't want to charge for music. We don't want to make money off the music that comes out of Amy. Instead, we want to charge for what you can do to the music. So it's really about the creativity that we, that's what our unique offering is. There's plenty of music out there. And if we're charging you for music, uh, we're competing with a whole industry that we don't want to compete with. We'd, we'd much rather be a unique creator platform. So the way that we've positioned the app now, you can download it. You can listen to all the experiences in the app. There's 10 of them that we've released today. And within a couple months, less than a couple months, there'll be another hundred from artists that you can listen to as well. And these are top tier artists around the world that have been using Amy Studio for the past year. Amy Studio is a subscription product. So as an artist, you subscribe to it monthly and you can use it for your existing workflow. So you can drag your stems, your loops, your musical ideas, dump them in the Amy Studio. Our machine learning will crawl all over those musical ideas. We'll understand those little bits and pieces of music at a level that very sophisticated artists know intuitively, but we're doing it at a mathematical level. You can then have Amy Studio export multi-track audio for you that you can go and put on your favorite uh, DSP and do whatever you want with. Mm -hmm. You can also publish it to our app where you engage your most enthusiastic fans who want to interact with your music and you get a ton of feedback in return. Um, and then last, you can also syndicate your music to YouTube. So we just, uh, I think a week and a half ago, released 10 live channels on YouTube. Um, and the unique thing about these channels is they are live. It's Amy in the web making music that's playing on a live YouTube channel. So you can imagine as an artist, you have a 
pile of stuff laying around on your laptop and typically, my station. Yeah, exactly. It's your station. Exactly. But you don't have to curate songs. You don't have to sit there and make tracks. You just take all this stuff that's lying around your laptop for every hour of music artists that we've spoken to release, they have another hundred hours of unfinished stuff on their laptop. That's gold to Amy. And it's gold because it's the artist's words. They just haven't taken the time to make a story out of it. Amy's a mm -hmm. perfect storyteller and it can do it in your voice. So the YouTube channel is essentially a live station that you can syndicate in a few clicks. There's a lot to wrap your head around here. And there's a lot in the general world of generative AI, but this is very different. This is, uh, one hand, it's a tool. On the other hand, it's a prosthesis. On the other hand, it's a platform. On the other hand, it's, it's a creator. On the other hand, it's something that I'm using to create. We're used to this world where an artist, a creator, makes something that has a discrete length. Uh, it's a three-minute song. It's a long 10-minute song or something like that. When you create an experience on Amy, does it have an end? No, it does have a beginning. Uh, it'll, when you, <laughs> <laughs> it would when need you, to have a beginning. <laughs> so you have a beginning and the, the idea is to really evolve the music, much like if you went and watched a live performance, you brought up a really good point earlier. Like the, the heart and soul of music was engaging with a musician who was playing live. The musician and the audience became one. And that symbiosis is something that was essentially stripped from music once we started trying to make money off of it. And the way we made money off of it is you recorded a three-minute song, put in a 30-second ad, then another three-minute song. And that's how we've been sort of shackled by the confines of a song for so long. Part of what generative music can open up is this opportunity for the artist to really be free form. And because you can expose these controls to the listener, each listener can essentially have that interaction with the artist in a very intimate way that was only possible before when they performed live. It, it's kind of uh, mind blowing. It, it's pretty amazing. And the YouTube angle makes me think some of the most popular things on YouTube are white noise. Some of those popular things on YouTube are nature sounds for four hours or six hours, something that somebody goes to sleep with. But music that is more traditional music is also massive and huge on YouTube. Uh, so much here to think about, uh, so much here to imagine. I can't wait to see your Amy studio to try it um, and, yeah. and, and see what I can create, see what your programming language looks like, um, all that stuff. Anything else to add, anything that we're missing? No, I thought that was, uh, it was really comprehensive and we're launching the, well, actually the interactive music players available today in the app store. So it released earlier this morning. It's on Android and iOS. We're releasing windows and Mac versions as well in a few weeks. And then of course you've got the YouTube channel. So if you, if you don't want to interact with music and just want to go listen, you can do so on, on YouTube today. Excellent. Edward, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.